Greetings and welcome to the first voice to voice voiced over voice overed either one can work voice overed um video on my channel. A bit of a backstory, every single voiceover that I recorded went wrong in one way or another. This is my final attempt if it doesn't go very well. I'm just gonna put music on the background. This is also my first digital art without an online art. I wanted to try a different technique, but I ended up, as you can see, using harsh lighting as a guideline because I'm used to doing digital art with lines. Uh, I typically do it with the sketch first, and then a bit of a clearing up sketch if the sketch is very big, which is not the case in this one in this um, drawing, except for the hands of course, and then the lines, and then the colors, and then the shading, you know, for this one, I did the colors for each one, and then the shading for each one, and then any additional details, you know, which is different, as you can see, um, wow, someone's playing loud music, <laughs> amazing, Anyway, I'm applying shading for each element one by one as you can see, which is different than usual as I've explained. Um, everything is shaded in yellow and purple. That's because they're complementary colors. I love complementary colors. They're the easiest way to make a nice color match. As you can see, I tried to do um, a more painterly style with the face for one second and then I realized it's not worth it. Let's just do it cartoony instead. Um, that's my style. I'm more a cartoony person. Well, not person. For digital art, it's cartoony because I am not very used to digital art. I didn't have to explain that in so many words. The eyes are always, for digital eyes, it's always an airbrush and then clearing up the top so that it fades out at the bottom so that it's not as weird looking, to me at least. Um, the hair, I had to do the touch-ups on the hair on a layer below the regular hair. As you can see, the dress was terrible, that's what I worked on next by first making it a more bearable color and then making the sh initial shading in red which makes the color scheme a bit warmer. I love making a warm color scheme and then adding purple to it because the purple not only cools it down but it adds to the vividness of the red. Color theory. I love it. <laughs> um, I made the dress a bit hairy. Not hairy. But I like the texture on the black the black stripes, the black hairs. That's because I love the texture of the whole piece. There's the fuzz of the antenna and the neck fuzz, there's the strings of the dress, there's the fuzziness of the outside of the boots, there's the hive in the foreground. I really like how it turned out. And I hope that the ones in the future will be as good as this. Or better. But I should probably not get my hopes up. Um, here we are working on the antenna. The antenna were, I don't know, <laughs> they were the same. I like the way they turned out as I've said before. The um, only thing is that the antenna and the neck pose kind of makes it look like a character from the game in that it looks kind of cheap. You know how games try to make it look a bit more plasticky? But it can work out, like hair and my PC crashed. That was a big episode. I thought that I lost the entire joint file as well. Here's the neck fluff. It's very easy, as you can see. That went past in a few seconds. Oh, someone's coming. Color as the antenna and the neck fluff. A bit of a tip is that you should limit the colors that you use in a drawing. Um, so if you can reuse a color, then please do. D don't make it clash, but make it um, just reincorporate it. You don't have to have different colors whenever you um, add a new element to the drawing. 
uh, that also goes to the number of colors in the drawing. In my last voiceover, I mentioned it for the flowers, and I'm probably going to mention it again. But essentially, I'll make sure that the number of colors in your drawing doesn't reach six. So there's red, orange, I know the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And if you got all of those in your drawing, then that's too much. Then that starts to become overcrowded. You should always have that number unless you're going to be in trouble. Well, a number less than six. So this drawing has red, of course, orange, red. It has the whole cohort except for blue and green. If I add blue and green, then it's going to look muddled and it's going to mess with the color scheme, essentially. The best color schemes are very limited. Well, not very limited, but limited, in a way. Um, the arms are the same color as the face. That's easy to guess. I don't know what I'm even saying anymore. <laughs> Shading, this is purple. This is hard shading. There are moments when I use soft shading with an airbrush, and there are moments when I just go in with a pen and a different layer. Um, the honey dipper, this thing, it was originally a one, but I changed it to a honey dipper because she's a bee, and then I had many problems with the honey dipper. You can see it looking absolutely terrible right now. I apologize. I genuinely, I know what it looks like. It, is, it looks better in the final product. <laughs> I turn it a bit after the legs because I realize that I, I can't put it, I can't publish this drawing like this. You can see it grating on me even after I um, add the little hairs to the bottom of the dress. I don't know what else to call those. You don't... Okay, so the legs. I love legs. Well, that's an incriminating sentence. Legs, they're chunky. <laughs> um, the Dante Milka team instilled a love of legs in me, and now I love drawing legs because I love making them, you know, that shape, the shape that they are. The boots are fluffy. That's because bees have furry legs. I wanted to incorporate that somehow because the owl drawing that I have is had a lot of research put to it and this one doesn't really so I wanted to make up for that to make um, her a bit fuzzier because bees are very fuzzy to pick up all the nectar from their flowers and now you see me fixing the honey dipper it was grating on me as I said I hate it how, I hate it how it looked it, it's a bit better now that the honey is here. Speaking of honey, here it is. I'm using um, Cheap Cookies' tutorial. I think you can find them on Tumblr. They, the, you have to make a base color and then a gradient from top to bottom and then add your basic shapes and then blending those shapes. But I, I decided not to blend in those shapes because it just looks... Even though it looks cartoony, I think it fits the style a bit better. If it were a bit more blurry, then I think it would be a bit of overkill, especially since there's so much hard shading around the drawing. It would be a bit of overkill to have suddenly so much hard, so much soft shading over here. Um, as you can see, lines are my main, main downfall, which is why I chose lineless. Well, mainly lineless. It's a bit of a double sword. I love lines, but I hate lines because the lines always end up wobbly, but lines are my guideline. In, tra in digital, well, in traditional art, I absolutely love lines. They are my crutch. I crosshatch everything. I absolutely love traditional lines. And then in digital art, wow, I can't do lines. <laughs> That's why I did the lines last, because that's a major journey. Um, one of 
my pet peeves about this drawing is that unlike most of my digital art, which you can find over at Cheesier It's, I might put it in the description, Cheesier It's on Tumblr and YouTube, I have one layer in which I um, put a gradient over the whole drawing instead of gradients for each layer but I didn't do this for this drawing and it even though it looks a bit brighter than it would if I had that method I'm starting to wonder if it will affect the unity of the drawing you know this doesn't look as unified as you can see from the top of the screen changing if you're very if you're if you notice things well okay okay this is the part okay fine I'm just gonna put my explanation for what I just did at the top of the screen, well not at the top of the screen, above the screen, on the screen. Uh, <laughs> I fixed the legs there and then this is what I tried to do for the dramatic foreground. The foreground is, it was initially a flower but I realized that the color layer, the colors, there would be too many colors if I do that green and blue don't work with this color scheme so I made a hive instead the hive I like the texture as I said textures I don't really like textures that much but this drawing is mainly about textures it fascinates me a bit you know and one thing that I need to say to all the artists out there is that you're allowed to love your drawings <laughs> All of the people who know me will think that I am hypocritical for saying this, but you are allowed to love your drawings. Love your drawings. It doesn't help you to not love it. I forgot to film the background, I'm sorry, but it's pretty simple. It's just a gradient and a Gaussian blur and then adding that, you know, simple stuff. Now it's going to the end of the video. Well, I didn't say that well. Um, have a wonderful day. Bye!